for traders and welcome. Uh, this is Mike Hamilton for Trade the Easy Way. Uh, just go through a couple of things we did in the room, but first of all, let's just look at what is going on in this market. You can see today that um, the US dollar versus the CAD has had a huge run to the upside, and today we saw a lot of weakness in the dollar. Now that weakness in the dollar basically means that it's risk on. Um, the dollar has been a safe haven in this mini little crisis, this huge drop we've had recently. So just beginning to see some uh, signs of life in the market. And this is typically this time of year when I would expect the indices and the stocks to start getting bought. And so we are seeing that already. So a couple of things we did in the room today. One worked, one didn't. One that didn't actually work in the room but did work overall was uh, this. So this huge, I was short this euro and got stopped out because my stop wasn't big enough to cope with the whip, so it wasn't worth my while staying in it. To be honest, I don't normally do that. Um, so we saw a huge uh, algorithmic drop, and there's the first five-minute bar. There's the second five-minute bar, and. After the, the idea is you wait until 15 minutes and then fade it back to where it came from. But this just didn't work. Uh, it did. It's, I got in too high, but, uh, too low, sorry. Um, bought it up, up here, didn't have my stop big enough and um, missed this little trickle up, but it wasn't much of a move anyway. What I did do was I shorted the DAX. So similar story, you wait 15 minutes till after the well, press conference in this case. We started getting some sell signals up here at this resistance. It drifted back to this range that we looked at in the room and then bounced right back again. Okay, so it's a three wave move. That's the initial move out of the data. Let me do that again. That's wave one, which came about after the announcement. That's wave two, and that's wave three. So it's all within a very tight range. Okay, so I suggest in the room that uh, you fade the DAX. I started just scout, just instead of sitting there with a position, um, I just, when it started working, I started to scout from bigger size to really capitalize on, on that move. And then, of course, stop doing it once once we um, hit this level. And I started buying the Dow once the Dow settled down after the open. Okay, so let's just have a look at the overall daily charts now. So this daily DAX has we have two wicks down here on the daily charts, and we are closing above this key level here, which I identified. Um, in as a, as a key support level and you can see what we seem to be getting is a potential move as here. So this, this took a week, this is in the autumn, this took a week to pan out. So it's possible uh, that we may take, may spend you know a few days down here and then potentially start to wind our way up if this is assuming we can close above this level here. Uh, we've got to close above 98, 99, and of course 10,000 before this has got any reasonable hope. What is a distinct possibility is that we, you know, these, these moving averages are suggesting that this is a good, clean trend. So when you pull back to any resistance levels, i.e., this Fib level or this 10,000 level could get sold into. So you need to ease into this rather than. Um, and steam into it. I'm, I'm going to be buying any dips down here at the moment to see if we can at least retest 10,000. And then if we can't close above 10,000, you can see that the, this 99 here is a huge resistance level. <coughs> so it's not all over, but uh, I mean there are indications that we, uh, we that the selling is over and the bulls are potentially coming in and picking this up. 
Right, so that's the DAO is it's still got three hours to run, but that is looking very similar. We just need to see where that closes. Pound yen. Uh, I traded this in the room. Actually, not in the room. I, uh, I, I marked it up in the room and called it in the room. Didn't actually trade it in the room. That's that's not correct. Um, this is this is a very powerful move up here. This this fib level is huge. I'll pan back in a minute. But similar to the indices, this does tend to move with indices. So again, I'll be trying to buy pullbacks around about the, the five six hundred mark if it gives me. Six hundred is more realistic. We're at seven thirty here at the moment. Uh, let's see if we can at least re do some retracing. So I promised you I would. If if I pan back, you can see the importance of this level right back in Feb fourteen. Uh, sorry, up here, Feb fourteen. Okay, so it has been on a massive sweep to the downside. It's, um, again, it, the indicators are absolutely flat on the on the floor, and the MACD is you know, very very extended. So let's just see if we can at least get some push back to these retracement areas. One seven five, one seven six is a major resistance area up there. And that would bring us in contact with this 50 EMA. So we're miles away from the 50 EMA. So we are very, very extended. All right. Um, the euro is choppy, although it is you know, closing lower. And what else have we got? We've got the pound US, which is obviously the same. Very similar. So we're coming off a 127 extension on this one. But if we crash into 143, 144, or somewhere around here, we could. Still, come and make that 161 extension. So, we could just end up with a breather rather than the full blown reversal. So, um, yeah, let's just see where we go. Very similar story. That's a, yeah, that's a big sweep to the downside here. So, we're going to have to close again above these levels for any significant rever any reversal. Otherwise, we could just consolidate, hit the buffers, and then come and retest 161. All it means is I'm not shorting until I get um, a consolidation pattern for another test of the downside. All right, uh, stocks. These are some stocks that we talked about in the room. This is Bank of America. That is a new low close above next day, so that's a good sell signal, uh, sorry, buy signal, uh, it's where you engulf, you get a new low and you engulf it the next day, it means that the uh, the bulls have potentially taken over. So if you start to dip your toe in the water, I would try and get 183, I would bid on 183, L Lloyd's is the same, uh, yep, although it would not close above this magic 65, so you might want to dip your toe in the water, but just just don't fill your boots. And um, Tesco, I am not going to get into Tesco yet until we get a gap fill. Uh, I would like to see that come down and test one four five area before I start dipping my toe into that one. Um, U.S. stocks. We've got Facebook, which looks very, very much like the indices. Coming off the two, yes, you know, so there's a hammer on the two on EMA. Uh, so, um, again, I'm cautiously op optimistic on this. This is a nice run. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so this is potentially a nice run. We just we need to just watch out that this isn't an A um, an A wave, and we get a B wave sell up here, which would take this down. All right, but it is a major support level, and this is worth a while. I'll try and bid on ninety four on that one. 
Okay, uh, let's look at some other bellwethers. Goldman Sachs is potentially picking up on 150. So we've sunk under 150 at the moment. We are pulling up from there. All right, I'll leave it there. I hope that helps and see you at the next update.